Do you have a boring, lifeless wall in your house that you're tired of staring at all day long? Well, in this video I'll show you how to turn this dull and uninspiring wall into this. If you've been following along on this project, you may have heard me mention in a previous video that I would be revealing why we painted these walls black. Well, today is the day. The reason is simple. The feature wall I'm installing is a wood plank product made to look like reclaimed barn wood. These planks are very rough and weathered, and many of the edges are slightly warped or not straight and square, giving them that authentic weathered wood look. This does establish that warm, rustic look we are going for, but it does create one minor problem. Since the edges of the planks aren't straight, many of the boards don't sit flush with one another, creating gaps here and there that allow you to see the wall behind the boards. Previously, the wall was a light blue color, which would have been very noticeable through those gaps. The solution? Paint the wall black and those gaps will basically disappear. You're probably wondering what the blue masking tape racing stripes are for, right? So before we really get rolling here, let's talk about that. I'm using the blue tape to mark the stud locations, which makes nailing these in place a breeze. You could mark the studs with a chalk line or a pencil, but again, since there are gaps between the boards, by using tape, I don't have to worry about marks on the wall left behind by a pencil or a chalk line. I can just peel back a short section of the tape, line up the nail gun with the blue tape below, and just bury that nail into a stud every time. This method works best if you use a center finding stud sensor so the tape line is centered over the stud. Check the description below to take a look at the stud sensor I use. Lining the tape up is easy. Find the center of the stud, mark it with a small piece of tape, then use a level as a straight edge to run a line of tape down the wall. And done. Okay, so I really don't have a whole lot else to say here. It might even be a relief for you compared to some of my other videos. I will still chime in every once in a while when I want to point out something important or have a tip to share, so definitely stay tuned, but I'll just let the pictures do most of the talking. So let's sit back, relax, and watch this transformation. Let's get it! So I am using a level as a guide here, but when you work with rough weathered wood like this, regardless if it's the real deal off a hundred year old barn or a manufactured product like this, getting everything perfectly aligned square and level just isn't a reality. Striking that balance between level and aesthetics is the fine art of this type of carpentry. Working with rough wood is a blessing and a curse. It allows for a certain level of imperfection, which is actually the point of it all. But within that imperfection, you'll find unexpected challenges to making the pieces fit. If you decide to take on a project like this, keep in mind that it does require a level of patience and compromise between perfection and completion. Now is a good time to install the window trim since I will have to cut and notch the planks to fit around the window. Installing this style of window trim is a snap. All you need is a tape measure, a level, and a finished nail gun. Start with the bottom piece, measure to make sure the trim piece is centered, grab a level to check for level, and then just nail it home. For the vertical pieces, use the level to verify they are sitting plumb before you nail them down. And 
finally, the top piece is the same process as the bottom. The most important thing is to be sure you're nailing into the wall framing around the window so the trim will stay put. If you want to take a deeper look and pick up some more tips for measuring and installing window trim, or how to process wood to make it look like the trim I'm using here, click the links that are about to pop up on the screen above. As I'm working toward the window, I'll install as many pieces as I can that won't need to be ripped down or notched to fit around the window. I find this approach works best, because you can just cut the more complex pieces to fill in the holes. Kind of like finding those last couple pieces of a puzzle. This approach does take a little forethought and attention so you can keep everything level and square, so that those last few pieces will fit in so very nice. Here I'm using a pencil to scribe a line directly onto the plank, showing where I will need to notch and cut it to fit. Directly transferring these marks onto the workpiece is much faster and more accurate than trying to measure and mark. You've probably heard the expression measure twice and cut once. Well, I say try not to measure at all and you'll only have to cut once. Once you have the plank marked, you can mark your cut lines pretty easily. I'm using a coping saw to cut out a small notch to the depth needed to fit around the window. I'll then rip the plank on the table saw up to that notch and I'm good to go. If you use a table saw like I am, you'll have to account for the radius of the table saw blade. If you don't notch out a large enough section to rip to on the table saw, you might go just a little too far and leave a saw kerf mark on the plank. If you're not comfortable with using a table saw to do this, you can instead use a jigsaw, a bandsaw, or a coping saw to get it done. Since these planks are rough and not all perfectly straight and square, some minor adjustments may be required to make them fit. A little bit of sandpaper is all you need. 60 or 80 grit sandpaper will get it done quickly. Lightly set the plank in place, look at where it is jamming up at, then sand a little bit at a time until that puzzle piece snaps in place.
Before I can install the next plank, I'll need to install the electrical box so I can cut the planks to fit around it. I'm using an electrical remodel box that has small mounting tabs on the face that will allow me to mount it by driving screws directly into the planks. Since the screws will be so close to the edge of the planks and these planks are thin and very dry, definitely pre-drill the hole so the screws don't split the wood. I am using pancake head screws here so they won't interfere with the outlet cover plate later. I realize I am kind of glossing over the electrical portion here, but that's okay, I've got you covered. If you want to take a deeper look at installing electrical wiring like this, click the link above. I'll also be covering the finished electrical work in an upcoming video. Planks were a little too wide to fit perfectly into this bottom row, but after a quick pass through the table saw, they dropped right in place. That really is what most of woodworking comes down to, cutting just a little bit off to make it all fit. I'm using the same technique here that I used to fit these around the window, scribing a pencil mark directly onto the plank. This mark will show me where to cut a small notch in the plank to pass the electrical wire through for the wall sconce lights. This electrical wiring that I'm fishing through the wall is for some accent lighting I will be installing behind the television that will sit on a mantle in this corner. If you would like to get an idea of what that will look like, check out the Living Room Remodel Project by clicking the link above. I have the door trim temporarily held in place with clamps so I can cut these last pieces to the correct length. The reason I'm temporarily mounting this door trim is because I have some additional work to complete first before I can permanently install this trim. Quick tip, mark the location and orientation on the back side of this trim piece with a pen so later you will install this exact piece at this location. This will ensure that if there are any imperfections in the edge of the trim, it will fit perfectly against the planks when you install it later. <laughs> 